Let's rock. Hi, everybody. Thank you for choosing S-Rock motherboard, a reliable motherboard produced under S-Rock's high quality control. And welcome to our live demonstration program. This program is presented in two sections. In section one, we will introduce the layout of the motherboard. In section two, we will show you the installation step by step. Hope this program will help you to set up your own PC system successfully. Before you start, please have your quick installation guide and the user's manual for reference. Okay, are you ready? Let's go to the next section. Welcome to section 1. Let's take a look at the form factor of motherboard first. There are two popular dimensions of motherboard, ATX and the micro ATX. As you can see, the ATX motherboard is larger in size and could accommodate more expansion devices than the micro ATX. Let's go over the major components of the motherboard. There are two major CPU vendors, Intel and AMD. Socket 47A is used for Intel Series CPU. Socket 462 is used for AMD K7 Series CPU. As for the memory modules, there are two types of memory modules, DDR DIMM and SDRAM DIMM. The DDR DIMM has 184 pins, and the SDRAM DIMM has 168 pins. They can be easily distinguished because of the foolproof design. There are three types of expansion slots on this motherboard. HEP slot, PCI slots, AMR slot. By the way, the S-Rock HEP slot has a special locking mechanism, which can securely fasten the graphics card inserted. Next, let's take a look at the connectors. The connectors are used to connect devices and the motherboards. There are different devices to different connectors. Please refer to the user's manual for more details. Here, I would like to introduce the most important connectors. Floppy connector, two sets of IDE connectors. This is primary IDE connector. This is secondary IDE connector. And this is 20 pin ATX power connector. IO panel ports to attach devices to motherboard. Let's take a look at the ports and the mouse port. PS2 keyboard, parallel port, serial port, fan port. USB ports. This is game port. Those are audio jack. At the last, we are going to introduce you the jumpers. This is what the jumpers look like. Sometimes you need to adjust the jumper setting in order to fit your special needs. Before you adjust the jumper setting, please refer to the user menu. Hope my brief introduction will help you understand more about the motherboard. Okay, let's go to the installation section. After the introduction of motherboard, we are going to show you step-by-step -step installation for PC system. In this live demo, we use micro ATX motherboard and the same common option as our demo sample. Don't forget to have your quick installation guide and the user manual ready for reference. Before you install or remove any component, ensure that the power switch is off or the power core is detected from the power supply. Failure to do so may cause severe damage to the motherboard or components. Mm -hmm. 
Now, we are going to install the CPU onto the motherboard. Before you install the CPU, please remember to prepare some thermal grease. Thermal grease can improve heat transfer, and it's spread between the CPU and P-Sync. If there is no thermal grease use, the CPU may be damaged due to overheat. Step 1. Unlock the socket by lifting the lever up. Step 2. Position the CPU directly above the socket, such that its mark corner matches the base of the socket lever. Step 3. Carefully insert the CPU into the socket until it fits in place. Step 4. When the CPU is in place, Press it firmly on the socket while you push down the socket lever to secure the CPU. Step 4. Install CPU fan and heat sink. For proper installation, please refer to the instruction manuals of CPU fan and the heat sink standards. Next, we are going to install a memory module onto a motherboard. Step 1. Unlock a DDR DIMM slot by pressing the retaining clip outward. Step 2. Align a DIMM on the slot, such that the notch on the DIMM matches the brake on the slot. Step 3. Firmly insert the DIMM into the slot until the retaining clip snap back in place. Then, we can place the motherboard onto the chassis. You can see there are several holes on the motherboard, and each hole has its coordinate screw holes on the chassis. To secure the motherboard to the chassis, first, we have to match each hole on the motherboard with its coordinate screw hole on the chassis, and then Place screws into the holes and tighten them. Now, we are going to show you how to install an add-on card into an expansion slot. Before installing the expansion card, please do read the documentation of the expansion card and make necessary hardware setting for the card. Now, we will demonstrate you the AGP add-on card installation. Step 1. Remove the bracket facing the slot that you intend to use. Step 2. Align the card connector with the slot. And press firmly until the card is completely seated on the slot. And lock on the locking mechanism. Step 3. Fasten the car to the chassis with screws. Next, I will show you the basic process of jumper adjustment. The jumper setting is easy, but need to refer to the jumper setting description in your user menu. Now, I will show you the basic process of jumper adjustment. You could see the jumper, which has three pins. And this is jumper cap, which is used to connect the signal between two pins. The jumper pin without jumper cap connected is called open. The jumper pin with jumper cap connected is called short. As to the detailed jumper setup information, please refer to your quick installation guide and user manual. In this section, we are going to show you how to connect the hard disk, floppy disk, CD-ROM, and the power supply through the connectors to the motherboard. As to the other devices, please refer to the user menu or a quick installation guide. Before the installation, let's take a look at these cables. There are three cables on the table. The floppy disk cable, the 80-pin IDE cable, and the 40-pin IDE cable. These ends of the cables should connect to the motherboard, and this end should connect to the devices. 
Now, we are attaching the floppy disk. Connect this end to the floppy drive. And the other end to the floppy connector. We are attaching the IDE hard disk. We use the 80 pin IDE cable. Connect this end to the hard disk. and the other end to the primary IDE connector. Next, we are attaching the CD-ROM. We use the 40-pin IDE cable. Connect this end to the CD-ROM and the other end to the secondary IDE connector. To optimize compatibility and performance, we suggest you connect your hard disk drive to the primary IDE connector and the CD-ROM to the secondary IDE connector just like what we have been demonstrated. In this section, we are going to show you how to connect internal devices to the motherboard. Next, we will plug the power supply to the ATX power connector. First, we take the 20-pin 12-volt power connector from the power supply. Then, plug it into motherboard's 20-pin ATX power connector. Now, we are going to show you how to attach external devices to the I.O. panel. In the previous demonstration, we finished all the chassis inside devices installation. Now. We are going to show you how to attach external devices to I.O. panel, like PS2 keyboard, LAN, USB device, and audio out to the PC system through I.O. panel. Now, you have experienced a general installation of a PC system. Hope you enjoy our DIY demonstration and may help you to set up your own PC system successfully. Besides, we strongly suggest you to read our quick installation guide and the user's manual for more detailed information. Here, I'm representing ASRock to give you our best regards and thank you for your support. Goodbye.